said. Okay. So let's look at inverse Laplace of complex conjugate poles. Now, if you take this example, s plus 7 over s squared plus s plus 7, if you factor the bottom, try and find what the roots are, what the poles are, what makes the bottom zero. That's basically what I'm looking for. So you go, well, quadratic, A equals 2, 1, B equals 2, 1, C equals 7, minus B, plus or minus the square root, B squared minus 4AC divided by 2A, right? That's what S is going to equal to. Minus 1, that'll be a plus 1, B, no, B is 1, that's minus 1, yep, plus or minus. 1 minus 4 times a times c, that's 28, divided by what? 2. So it's minus 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 27 over 2. So basically your answer is going to be negative 0.5 plus or minus, there's i here, I, what is the square root of 27? Where's negative my point? Negative point 1 over 2 is point 0.5, right? Yep. Oh, okay. And negative 27 squared 27 over 2. What is the square root 27 divided by 2? Roughly 2.6 I. So one solution is going to be what? One solution is going to be S equals negative 0.5 plus 2.6i. The other one is going to be what? S equals negative 0.5 minus 2.6i. So when you bring them to this side, that becomes your factor. It becomes S plus 0.5 plus 2.6i. Should be a minus, right? Minus. And this will be S plus 0.5 plus 2.6i. So I could take that problem that you see there, Vs, and write that S plus 7 over S plus 0.5 minus 2.6i times S plus 0.5 plus 2.6i. Which I can break it down to two parts. And since this is linear, the top is going to be constant, K1 and K2. And the question is, okay, once you find K1, K2, how would you take the inverse of this, complex roots? How would I take it? I'll probably do this problem both ways if I have time. I'll do it the way you do it in math by completing the square and breaking down to sine, cosine, and I'll do it this way. So this is where I'm going with this, inverse Laplace of complex conjugate. If you have a problem like this and you want to find the inverse Laplace of it, how would you go about finding the answer to that? That's why I'm looking at this. So next page. So if I have, I'm going to give you a rule as always, not just for that example. If you have in the bottom S plus alpha minus j beta. You saw that. And notice the alpha and beta are the same. These numbers are the same for both of them. It's one is positive here, negative here, positive here, and positive here. That's what's going to happen. And the other one is going to be s plus alpha plus j beta. The good news is if you call this K1, this will always be the conjugate of that. So you only have to find one of them. 
That's all you gotta find. We could use K two. You can call it K two, but it's gonna be the conjugate of this. Oh, K two is equal. So to if this is five angle zero, or five angle thirty, this is five angle negative thirty. If this is seven angle negative forty, that's seven angle forty. So I called K one, K two, and spend the time looking for it. We know it's gonna be the conjugate of this. Okay. So you only have to find K one. And to find K1, and again, usually you have a problem and all sitting like this is equal to, I don't know, what was my previous example? The example I was using, it was what? This one. So I could have wrote this S plus 7 over this, right? Notice K1 is sitting on top of what? S plus 0.5 minus 2.6J, so you're going to, or I. So you're going to take that piece out of this. You're going to take that piece out, leave this one in, and find the value what makes the bottom zero. So how am I going to write that mathematically? I'll call this function f of s. So k1 is going to be, since k1 is sitting on top of s plus alpha minus j beta, I'm going to multiply the original problem, which means I want to cancel this from the bottom really, but mathematically, I'm going to take the original problem and multiply it by this one. So notice, if I take the original problem, which is this one, and multiply it by this term, what will happen to that term in the bottom? Disappears. So that's what I'm trying to say. We take the original problem, we need to get rid of this. How do you get rid of it? By multiplying this whole thing by that piece. That will eliminate that, and that's what this one is telling you. And you want to find the value when s equals, what makes this one zero, the bottom? Well, we know it's negative 0.5 plus 2.6i, right? So we try that when at negative alpha plus j beta. And once you find k1, and let's assume for the sake of discussion, assume that k1 is equal a angle theta. Assume that. So that means f of s becomes what? a angle theta over s plus alpha minus j beta. And the other one is going to be what? What do you think the other one's going to be? A angle negative theta. Last year. And once you have out A here, you're really done. What's F of T? Ready for that, for the answer, all in one step? It's going to be two times A whatever that number is, 2 times a times e to the power of negative alpha t cosine beta t plus theta. All done in one step. Once you reach this point, you know A, you know alpha, and you know beta, you know your answer. I don't have to complete this square. I don't have to find the sine, cosine, use the trig identity, try to break and find all the stuff. This will take me there. So let me take an example. You see how we're going to use it. Here's f of s equals, I don't know, let's put something here, 10 times s plus 2 divided by s times s squared plus 4s plus 5. I can't factor this too bad. If I can factor it, I'm in good shape. 
Let me take a peek at it. If I take that problem out, I can take the S squared plus 4S plus 5, solve it using the quadratic formula, and see what my roots are, my complex roots. So it's going to be minus B plus or minus the square root. 16 minus 4 times, which is 20, right? Divided by 2. This is S squared plus 4S plus 5. Okay. Negative 4 plus or minus, that's the square root of negative 4, which is what? 2i over 2. S equals what? Negative 2 plus or minus i. So when you bring everything to one side, your roots becomes s plus 2. One of them is going to be minus, one is going to be plus i. What does that mean? It means I can take this problem now and break it down to something over s, k1 over s, plus k2 over s plus 2 minus i plus k2 conjugate instead of k3 over s plus 2 plus i. That's how quick. If I know k1, k2, I'm done. K1 is a simple root, distinct root. So K1, let's look at this expression. K1 is sitting on top of S. So you multiply this whole thing by S. When you multiply by S, S disappears. So this is gone. What do you have? 10 times S plus 2 over S squared plus 4S plus 5 when s equals what? What value make the bottom zero, the pole? Zero. Zero, zero plus two is two times 10, 20. Zero, zero and five, so what's k1, four? k2. Now remember, this one here is really this times that this times that. I'm looking for k2, so I need to take this piece out of it. Remember, this is 10 s plus 2 now over s times s plus 2 minus i, s plus 2 plus i. So if you multiply this expression by s plus 2 minus i, which means get rid of this piece out, so what's left? 10 times s plus 2 over s times s plus 2 plus i. When s equals what? Negative 2 positive i. Negative 2 positive i, exactly. And since we have a graphing calculator, if you put negative 2 plus i, it's going to change it to polar for you. Then you can plug it in and get the answer. So let's see. Um, negative 2 plus i. The machine says 2.23 times 10 to the 153. Add 2 to it. Multiply the result by 10. The top is going to be 10 angle 90, which means just 10 J. Let's look at the bottom. When you do negative 2 plus I, the negative 2 is going to cancel the plus 2. What's I and I here? 2 I. So times um, negative 2 comma what? 1 or 1 I. The bottom here, it's 4.47, that's good enough. Angle negative 115.6. When I divide them. 5.6, right? Oh. Oh, 1.116, you mean? 
Isn't that what it says? 116, one, one, six, yeah. 0.6, thank you. Yep. Yeah. So let's do the division here. 10 angle 90 divided by that answer. It's 2.24 roughly. Angle what? Negative 153.4. Four, that's good enough. So now I know my A for the complex one. I know A equals what? 2.24. I know what theta is equal to. Negative 153.4. I know what alpha is equal to. 2. I know what beta is equal to. 1. Do I have my answer? Absolutely. For the first one, what is the inverse of plus of K1 over S? K1 is 4. That's 4 over S. Isn't that 4 u sub t? 1 over S? Yep. Alpha is 2 and beta is 1. Oh, okay. Not, not from the quadratic. Yeah, from the, 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 the roots. Remember I call them alpha plus j beta when I did the math? When I factor that, I said, if you have an equation where this is alpha and alpha and this is beta, here's your answer. And A, this is actually the magnitude, that number. We, so 2 times 2.24. So let's get the answer for the second part. What's 2 times that number? Well, I'll do it this way. 2 times 2.24 e to the minus alpha is what? 2 negative 2t two cosine beta beta is 1 plus theta which is negative 153.4 Is that 1t? 1t, yes. Now I'm going to clean it. It's 4 plus 4.48 e to the minus 2t cosine t minus 153.4. And I'll just put u sub t at the end. Quicker than completing the square, cosine and sine, rewriting the top, and figuring everything. <coughs> 